What's up everybody, I'm Renata and we're here with urologist Dr. Barukam. He is here to talk to us about prostate cancer because knowing the basics in life saves lives, right doc? Absolutely. Okay, Doc, what should men know when it comes to early detection of prostate cancer? One of the things that we've learned about prostate cancer is very often they'll present with no symptoms. So it's one of those things that you have to kind of test for to figure it out. The testing really consists of two main things. One is to do a blood test called a PSA test, and the other is through a simple digital exam where a finger is inserted inside through the backside and we'll take a three second examination of the prostate. And so that's why the men don't like to do the prostate cancer exam. Right, and so there's two elements to that. I think number one is it's really not such a big deal. You know, we're talking about a three second exam where the finger's going inside, you're just doing the exam. It has nothing to do with your manliness or your manhood. We're, we're doing a, a medical examination that within a moment is done and can, can actually save lives. But the other element of it is, if I have somebody who will never accept that part of the physical examination, the blood test at a minimum will actually go a very long way. And so it's worth the conversation. And so with that, can we talk about the location of the prostate since you have to go that route in order to detect it? You know, if you think about the way the urinary system is organized, you have the two kidneys that'll be up at the top. Those will then lead to a small tube called the ureter, which then connects to the bladder. And then the bladder has a small channel that comes down from it called the urethra. Surrounding the urethra is the prostate directly internal to the pubic bone. The reason why we do that through a rectal examination is that that is the easiest point for us to be able to feel for the prostate. All right, so what exactly is the PSA test detecting and why is it so crucial? PSA is a blood test which is testing for one of the proteins that's made by the prostate. So all prostates will make PSA whether or not they're cancerous or non-cancerous. What we have to figure out as the urologist is what does this level of PSA mean in a specific individual. And as an artificial cut point, we look at PSAs above 4 as being considered abnormal and PSAs below 4 as being considered normal. If we were to have an abnormal PSA test or if we were to have an abnormal rectal examination, we then think about further testing to try to figure out is this due to potential cancer or is this more a benign picture that we're looking at. So should it be a part of a man's physical every year or how often should they get a PSA level check? So it should be part of the annual physical and I want to reiterate to men that there are many primary care physicians who are no longer doing PSA testing and they're not doing rectal examinations. And really one of the most important things that I want to get across is that men should be looking for prostate cancer, they should be looking early because very often if we identify this early Early, we can treat it, we can cure it, and you should challenge your doctor. You should tell them, I want this test, why shouldn't I do this test? And although it's uncomfortable for somebody to say, please do a rectal exam on me, people should be requesting it. Generally speaking, in the average population, we say men over the age of 50 should be doing that testing once a year. Among black men, we start looking at around the age of 45. And certainly in men who have a strong family history of prostate cancer, we start thinking about earlier screening. So outside of the PSA test, could there be other warning signs men should be aware of? Unfortunately, it tends to run silent unless you're testing for it direct, unless it's more advanced, and then patients will present with different types of symptoms, including bone pain, weight loss, some other things of that sort. But generally, if we're thinking about urinary complaints, yes, they need a workup. Yes, those patients should be evaluated but more often there's a benign cause that's leading to that rather than a cancer that's contributing. So I've also heard that term enlarged prostate. Is that a warning sign too? And if you have it, can that increase your risk of prostate cancer? Enlarged prostate is nothing abnormal and is nothing unusual. In most men, what, the way that I explain this to them is if I were to tell a man that he has an enlarged prostate, it's like me telling him he has big ears or big hands. It's a statement of his anatomy. Now in some men, that can then lead to urinary complaints because it's obstructing the flow of urine from the bladder. But in and of itself, it's not in any way related to prostate cancer, it's not a sign of prostate cancer, it doesn't increase the risk of prostate cancer. You are enlightening me as well because when I hear enlarged prostate, I think that, oh, that's something that could be detrimental down the line. But just like you said, it's just big ears, big hands, big feet, big nose. You just have a big prostate. Right. <laughs> now, most people, <laughs> we're identifying it because they're having urinary complaints. Most men will say, I'm waking up a few times a night, or I'm having a difficult time initiating my stream, or 
I'm going very frequently during the day. In that scenario, enlarged prostate has a quality of life effect where we can treat them with medications and help, but it's not a sign of something more insidious going on. That makes sense. You're the doctor, not me, okay? All right. You seem like a doctor to me. I think we're right. <laughs> so moving back to prostate cancer, once you're diagnosed, I know this is rather complicated, but can you break down the different stages of the prostate cancer? The best way for people to kind of think about this is in some people you have organ confined disease, which is more localized, which you've identified in an earlier stage. Then there's locally advanced cancer where it has spread to some of the close by organs, but hasn't really spread beyond there and can still be cured. And then we start thinking about more distant disease, where cancer has spread to either the lymph nodes or unfortunately in some people has spread to other sites, which include the bone, the liver, and things of that sort. So, you know, those are the primary stages that we look at. And based on that staging, we then think about different treatment options. And a lot of it is based on that patient's age and their other health conditions. So, you know, when we think about more local cancers, the mainstays of therapy include surgery, which is used to remove the entire prostate. That's usually done with something called an operating robot, which is operated by a surgeon who sits on the other side of the room, where there's small keyhole incisions made into the abdomen and that surgeon is driving the robot to remove the prostate. In some people, we can give radiation therapy, which will kill the prostate cancers in its place. And unfortunately, in people who do have more advanced cancers, we start thinking about other treatments, including hormone therapies and chemotherapeutic options. Thankfully, prostate cancer generally tends to be a slow-moving disease, and so we have many different touch points where we can get to this. But again, screening is important, and catching this early may make the whole difference. I've also heard that black men in particular need to be even more vigilant about prostate cancer and that they have higher rates of getting it. What do black men and the women in their lives need to know? I'm listening. I don't have a husband yet, but I'm going to inform my future book. There is a genetic predisposition that's been noted that in men who are of black origin, that there's a higher rate of prostate cancer that comes on earlier and is more aggressive. And so starting that screening process earlier becomes very helpful, because if you're catching these at an early stage, you're able to move on, lead to a cure, and I'm using the word cure intentionally, and that person can then lead a long, full, and fruitful life. From a partner's perspective, the important part is to be supportive of your partner within this. That, you know, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of misconceptions. People are concerned about getting a rectal exam and don't kind of know what all this means. And so being there and making it clear that this is a, a routine, normal part of the physical exam and that this can be even avoided if it absolutely had to and you can just start with the blood test may be worthwhile. But I say can be avoided we should still try to get the complete exam whenever we can. So uncles, brothers, cousins, please go on out there and make sure you get your annual exams. Tell your doctor, listen, I want the rectal exam. I want the PSA test. And sisters, encourage your man or your brother or your uncle to make sure they get the exam. The exam could be their life. <laughs>